A lot of people lack confidence simply because they think about it wrong, specifically what it is and how it actually works. On the other hand, one of the best ways to become more confident pretty quickly is to change how you think about what confidence is and how it works. In this video, I'm going to walk you through four ways confident people think differently. Let's dive in. Number one, confident people are okay feeling afraid. One of the biggest misconceptions out there about confident people is that they don't feel afraid or they don't get anxious, but nothing could be further from the truth. For one thing, confidence is not a feeling. It's a belief. Specifically, it's the belief that you can do the right thing despite feeling afraid or anxious. For example, let's say you're in the middle of a meeting at work and you have a really good idea that you're thinking about sharing, but then a little bit of self-doubt and some fear and anxiety creep up and you're considering, you're thinking to yourself, well, oh, maybe I shouldn't share it. Like, what if people think I'm dumb? And then you really start feeling anxious. But you respond to some of those thoughts by reminding yourself of why you actually want to do this. Hey, I think this is actually a really good idea and would be important for our team to know about this and potentially do it. And if I think back on the past, there have been a lot of times when I wished I had spoken up more and didn't. And I think I personally suffered and my team suffered as well from doing that. So even though I feel anxious, I really believe this is the right thing to do. And I believe I can do it even though I feel anxious and I don't feel great about it. So I'm going to speak up and I'm going to share my idea. That's confidence. It's not the absence of anxiety. It's doing the right thing despite feeling anxious. Another way to think about this is that confident people are defined by their tolerance for fear, not its absence. So if you want to be more confident, you need to change your relationship with fear and anxiety. Instead of seeing it as an enemy that needs to be eliminated before you can do the confident thing, try reframing it and validating it as something that's totally normal and despite being uncomfortable, it's something you can tolerate while you do the right thing anyway. And luckily, the more you practice tolerating your fear and anxiety, the easier it will be to build confidence and keep doing more of this in the future. Number two, confident people ask for advice when they need it, not because they want it. One of the biggest confidence killing behaviors out there is what's called reassurance seeking. And this is the habit of immediately asking other people for comfort or advice anytime you feel anxious or unsure of yourself. Or maybe you're at work and you get some pretty negative feedback from your manager, so you immediately head over to your coworker's office to ask them some advice about it. Now, the problem with reassurance seeking isn't that you're asking for advice. In general, asking for advice is a really good thing. It only becomes problematic when it's used as a coping mechanism to alleviate anxiety and insecurity. When you immediately avoid your anxiety or try to get rid of it by outsourcing it to other people, you teach your brain not only that anxiety is dangerous and a threat, which makes you more anxious about potentially getting anxious in the future, it also kills your confidence. You're basically telling your brain, I can't handle this. If you always run away from it or you always outsource it to other people, your brain is eventually going to learn more and more that you can't handle difficult situations like this and your confidence is going to go down and down and down. Confident people, on the other hand, don't outsource difficult emotions to other people. When they feel anxious, they sit with it and try to work through it themselves first. Once they've done that, they may need to go to someone else for some advice, but they don't instinctively, impulsively do it as a way to get rid of that anxiety or insecurity. Number three, confident people control their focus, not their feelings. As we discussed earlier, when you're in a difficult or challenging situation, it's totally normal to feel a little bit anxious or afraid, sometimes even a lot anxious and afraid. But one of the secrets that really confident people know is that that's normal. And because it's normal, and because they're good at normalizing it for themselves, they're willing to have the anxiety instead of trying to get rid of it. And what this does is long-term, it removes this anxiety about anxiety, which makes confidence that much harder. Now, one of the reasons confident people are so good at accepting that initial burst of anxiety and not generating more anxiety by trying to get rid of it is because they do the opposite of what most people do when confronted with anxiety. Most people try to control their anxiety. Confident people control their attention. They know that you can't actually control any emotion, including fear and anxiety. And in fact, the more you try to control difficult emotions, the worse they tend to get. And this makes sense if you think about it. If you put all of your focus and energy and attention into how anxious you're feeling, you're going to be consumed by negativity. And it's going to be harder to act on your values courageously and with confidence. But if you stay focused on what you actually want, your goals and your values, you're much more likely to feel empowered rather than afraid. 
In other words, confident people are expert at acknowledging and validating their anxieties and fears briefly, but then refocusing their attention on what they want and need to do. Number four, confident people are compassionate, not critical with their mistakes. Of course, we all make mistakes, but what separates really confident people from those who aren't so confident is how they respond to mistakes. Specifically, confident people use their mistakes for growth, not punishment. Most people, through years of unhealthy training and modeling, have learned and internalized this tendency to punish themselves after mistakes with tons of you know, self-criticism and judgment and lots of negative self-talk. I guess the idea being that if they punish themselves after a mistake, they'll be l less likely to make it in the future because they'll have learned from their mistake, theoretically. Now, the trouble with this is it makes a little sense superficially, but it doesn't actually work because punishment is actually a terrible teacher long-term. Confident people, on the other hand, avoid this spiral of failure, self-criticism, and even lower self-confidence by using self-compassion instead of punishment after mistakes. Of course, they get upset after a mistake or an error, just like anybody else, but how they respond to it is different. They don't keep beating themselves up or criticizing themselves. Instead, they treat themselves the way they would treat any other friend or colleague or person they care about who is struggling after a mistake, with compassion and support and kindness. All you need to know. One of the biggest reasons why confident people are so confident is because they actually think very differently about what confidence is and how it works. Specifically, there were four ways that confident people think differently. One, confident people are okay with feeling afraid. Two, confident people ask for advice when they need it, not just because they want it. Number three, confident people control their focus, not their feelings. And number four, confident people are compassionate, not critical with their mistakes. All right, thanks for watching. I hope you found this video enjoyable and helpful. If you wanna get more ideas and tips from me about building confidence, dealing with anxiety, and other aspects of emotional health and resilience, I write a free weekly newsletter called The Friendly Mind. You can sign up below using the link in the description.